Today we will be looking at quicksort and how to implement it using arrays. Quicksort is a divide and conquer algorithm. This means we recursively call it and break down our problem into smaller subproblems. Quicksort is an in-place sorting algorithm. It has a time complexity of big O of n squared and a space complexity of k. However, the average case time complexity of quicksort is big O of n log n. Quicksort is better for sorting arrays than merge sort. This is because merge sort needs to allocate and deallocate space, which takes time, and it uses more memory than quicksort. Also, quicksort has better caching on modern processors. However, merge sort is better for linked lists since we need to iterate from random access. Also, merge sort only needs big O of 1 to do insertions in a linked list. You may notice that there's many different implementations of quicksort out on the web. This is because there's two key implementations of quicksort and many optimizations for quicksort. The popular version of quicksort that most people know is made by Nico Lomuto. The original version of quicksort was made by Sir Tony Hoare. Sir Tony Hoare's implementation is actually the better of the two, but Nico Lomuto's implementation has been seen as an easy way to understand the algorithm. So we'll start off with going over Lamuto's quicksort and then I'll go over Horse quicksort. So here we have an example array with the numbers 0 through 9 sorted in random order. We call Lamuto's quicksort by passing in the array, the beginning index of the array, and the ending index of the array which can be found by taking the length of the array and subtracting 1. So here's our Lamuto quicksort method. This is a recursive method so we will stop when the start index is not less than the end index, or essentially we looked at every value in the array, or subarray. The first thing we need to do is sort our array around our pivot point. So we call partition. We pass in the array, the start index, and the end index. Here's the partition method taken in the array, the start index, and the end index. Here I declare an integer called temp. This is used for swapping indexes later on. We can use any point as a pivot in the array, but the most basic implementation is to use the end index. So here we grab the end index in the array and set it to our pivot value. Next we need to set a partition index, which we set to the start index of the array. As we go through the array, when we find values that are less than our pivot value, we will swap them with our current partition index and then increase the partition index. This is done until all values lower than the pivot value are on the left side of the final partition index spot. And the final partition index spot will then be swapped with the end of the array or the pivot value and our pivot value will be in the partition index spot. So now we will loop through our array excluding the pivot which we hold at the end of the array. As you can see we go from the starting index up to the end index and then we compare each value to the pivot value and if it is less than or equal to the pivot value then we need to swap this value with our partition index. So as you can see here set i to a temporary variable put our partition index value into our value at i in the array then we take our value that was at i in the array and put it at the partition index in the array. After that we increase our partition index so we'll be able to swap it with another value that's lower than the pivot value this is just a print function to display to the console for later. For example, here's our array. Our first value 4 was less than 6, so it swapped with itself. So 0, .0 swap with 0. Now we're at index 2, which has a value of 1, which is less than 6. So we set it to our temporary variable. And our partition index is at 1, so that would be number 9. So we're going to swap number 1 and number 9. So as you can see, 4 stayed where it was. Then we have 1 was swapped with 9. And it'll continue doing this until all lower values are on the left side of where 6 will finally end up. Now that we've moved every value less than our pivot point left to our partition index, we must swap our pivot point with our partition index. So we get the end of the array with index 9, which is the value is 6. So we set that to our temporary variable. And our partition index is at 6, which is what we expected. So we swap the value 9 with 6. So now our pivot point is at its final place in the array, which 6 is at 6. Then 9 was moved to the end of the array, and all values less than 6 are to the left of 6. 
This is just a print method for later to show on the console. And now we return our partition index of six, which is the final place of our pivot value that we were just comparing to. So now that we have our pivot index, after we went through our first sort of the array, we can recursively call our function using the left side and the right side of the array. So we call quick sort again from the start index zero up until the pivot point, so the pivot index minus one. And then we call the right side of the array for quick sort from our pivot index plus one to the end index of the array. This method will be recursively called until the entire array is sorted looking at each subarray, for example, from index two plus one to index four. Each method will break when the start index is not less than the end index, and then the array is sorted. So let's take a look. So here's our starting array in the Lumuto quick sort. As you can see, uh, we start at index i at zero, and our partition index at zero, and four is less than six, so we swapped four with four. Then we move through the array and we find one is less than six. So we swap our partition index that we increase to, to nine. So nine swaps with one. And we increase our partition index and partition is at nine again. And we go through the rest of the array. We up to three, which three is less than six. So we swap nine and three. And then we go further into the array and we find zero is less than six. And our partition is at eight, so we swap zero and eight. Same with two and nine, same with five and eight. And since we've made it to the end of the array, now we can take six and swap it with nine. Now six is at its final place in the array and we recursively call the method until we have the entire array sorted. And here we have the array sorted zero through nine, just as expected. Here's Hoare's version of quick sort. We do the same thing. We pass in the example array, the starting index at zero, and the end index, which we get from taking the array length and subtracting one. As you can see, Hoare's version of quick sort has the same basic setup. We break when start index is not less than end index. We start with getting our partition. Then we do our two recursive calls to quick sort. The one thing to note is we may not get the pivot's correct final position when we get our pivot index back from our partition method. And so, when calling quick sort, we go from the start index to the pivot index, including the pivot index this time. Our second call can exclude the pivot index, though. So here's our partition method for Hoare's implementation. This would be the key difference between the implementations, is the partitioning. Here I have a temporary integer to swap indexes later, and in this version, we take the start index plus the n index, divide them by two, and that will give us the index for our pivot point in our array. And then we take the value and set it to our pivot value. And this will be the value that we're comparing to in this implementation of the partition. We will also be looping through differently. So we set a left index, which is the start index minus one, and a right index which is the end index plus one because the left index will be looping forward and the right index will be looping backwards as we swap values. So here we have an infinite loop. First thing we do is take our left index and we start going through the array, moving from left to right. And once we find a value that is not less than the pivot value, our pivot value is three in this case, and at index zero going from left to right, we have the value of four, which is not less than three. So we have our left index. Then we have another do while loop going from right to left. So we take our right index and we decrement from it. And then we stop when we have a value that's less than our pivot value. So yet again, our pivot value is three. And at index six in the array, we have two. And since two is not greater than three, we found our right value. If our left index is greater than or equal to our right index, then we went through the entire array looking at each element and we can return the current index of the right index of the array. This will be our pivot point. But as we're looping through, we need to swap our values. So the small value that we found on the right side of the array will be swapped with the large value that we found on the left side of the array, which makes this version of the algorithm very efficient. And this is why there's less swaps than Lamuto's version of the algorithm. So as shown before, we'll be swapping the values four and two. So now two is on the left side of three, and four is on the right side of three. This is just a print statement for later to show on the console what we're doing. And then we recursively call this function, getting our pivot index back, which was three. We go from zero to three, including three. And then we go from four to the end of the array. And eventually we'll get back the sorted array. 
So here we have it. Here's our original array. Our first pivot value is three. So going from left to right and then right to left, we found our first value two to swap with four. So those are swapped. So two and then four. Then we found our next value, which is larger on the left side, which is nine is larger than three. Then coming from the right side, zero is less than three, so we can swap those. And then we move forward again, and we have from the left side, eight is greater than three, and three is three, so we can swap those. And at this point, our starting index and our ending indexes have crossed, and we return the pivot, and we find our next pivot value of zero, and then we recursively call the function until our array is sorted. And we end up with the array of zero through nine in order just as we expected. And that is Hoare's implementation of quicksort. As I mentioned before, there are many modifications to these sorting algorithms that can be made. For example, we could pick a different pivot point. So going back to Lumudo's quicksort algorithm, before we go through the algorithm, we can pick a different pivot point. So instead of using the end index in the array, we could use the median of the first, middle, and last values in the array, or the array's partition. This method was suggested by Robert Sedgwick, and it helps for the runtime of things like sorted arrays or reverse sorted arrays. So in our partition method for Lumudo's quick sort, just before we get our pivot, we can call get custom pivot, passing in our array, our starting index, and our ending index. To get the median in the array, let's first find our mid index by taking the start index plus the end index and dividing by two. Let's declare a temporary integer so we can swap our values. If the mid index is less than the start index, we should swap those. And if the end index is less than our start index, we should swap those. Now that we have our values in order, we can swap our mid index with our end index, which will become our pivot point in the array. So our median value will be put at the end index, and we will use the algorithm just as we did before. But now, the end index will be the median of these three values. So here are the results of our modified quicksort for Lamudo. Using Sedwick's partitioning, you could also choose a random pivot or any any pivot you want and just switch it with the end index and see how it goes. There are many modifications to quicksort, but these are the two basic implementations and a demonstration of how to switch your pivot point. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.